Yeah, so I was carrying on about Livingston saying we have to replace um, selling people with selling goods. We must have proper trade um, and therefore slavery will be at an end because there were slave raiders with, with rifles who could just overmaster anyone who tried to resist them. Most people from the eastern coast of Africa, um, Muslims were almost without exception, who said this is entirely acceptable for us to enslave um, uh, kafir, as in the, the infidel. And indeed, the Afrikaners, the, the, the Dutch people in South Africa, they picked up this word and used it as an appropriate word for a black person. Originally, it's Arabic. I mean, I think someone doesn't believe in Islam. Um, so he tried to stop that, but he didn't actually take up arms against them. Perhaps, perhaps surprising the slavers didn't kill him. And then he hadn't been heard of for years, but he was being lionized back in this country, and the newspapers were full of their exploits. Um, so this country very much believed in muscular Christianity at the time, that uh, people were right to um, spread the light of the gospel as they, they saw it, and so they thought that he really was a hero for bringing the good news to um, people who were living in ignorance of it in other parts of the world. I mean, what if someone was here to, to spread another religion here? Wouldn't have been too popular, though there were a few Hindu missionaries. Um, anyway, Henry Morton Stanley, an, an American newspaper man, went to Africa to try and find Livingston. Livingston had been heard of for ages. So he landed um, in, in Tanzania, as we now call it, and he, he teamed up with Tipu Tip, who was an, um, an Arab slaver on the east coast of Africa, because he had the contacts, he had the bearers, and he had the armed men to escort him and therefore Morton Stanley was safe and killed many people on his way in. Um, so finally, found, find, he located in what's now called the Democratic Republic of Congo. And that was that. And because he'd been, he'd been heard, oh yes, there's a white man several days march away, and there were virtually no white people um, uh, so far from the coast of Africa. And as he approached him, Henry Morton Stanley uttered the immortal words, Dr. Livingston, I presume. And it was indeed Livingston who died not that long afterwards. And so his heart was cut out of his body. I'm not sure how they preserved it, but some of his faithful servants carried it back to the United Kingdom to bury it with great pomp in St. Paul's Cathedral. So that was the end of Livingston. But uh, Henry Morton Stanley lived on, returned to this country, been born in Wales, was later elected a Liberal Unionist Member of Parliament, and indeed had a house very close to Parliament. Um, not an entirely good man, Morton Stanley. I know he had a very difficult upbringing, born outside of wedlock in a time when that was an immense impediment to anyone's advancement and it moved to the United States, which is called the American Civil War, served in the Confederate Army, and was pro-slavery. But that is Livingston, someone who, who people don't learn about very much these days, but um, for, for decades, Scotland was very proud of him, such that he needed no introduction. You notice on the pedestal here that there's no more information about him. Um, but uh, um, so, sadly, his memory is largely forgotten these days. People would have a more um, mixed view of him now, saying he was the, the vanguard of imperialism, and imperialism is obviously widely execrated these days. All right, that's enough from Edinburgh, the capital of North Britain. I shall switch it off. Goodbye from the Athens of the North.